So um, I'll just tell you a little bit about how we got started um, quite a few months ago. Um, so, you know, our group of friends had quite vigorous political discussions. We had so many good ideas, but no one was doing anything about it. I feel like this is actually a common problem amongst um, you know, armchair, armchair politicians. Um, that there's lots of great ideas out there that no one really does anything about. So I, I thought it might be a good yeah. idea to try and formalize that into something that we could you know, take to the public. So I wrote a large document on many uh, policy areas. It ended up being 10,000 words. Um, I wrote it you know, uh, basically as I was on a conference in Germany. Um, it, yeah, so from there, we, I, I sent it around to my friends and we went back and forth on it, we collaborated. Uh, and it was a really interesting process. We all contributed. We could see each other editing on the, the Google Docs, which we'll talk about later in the presentation. Um, we refined our policies, we took out some, we put in others. Um, and then, yeah, we had a, an official meeting a few months ago and then we started the promotion, which is where a lot of you guys came. Okay, so I'll talk about where we're coming from from a, a philosophical point of view. So the two elements that we uh, are basing our philosophy on is uh, utilitarianism and conopianism. And so I'll explain what both of those are. So utilitarianism basically says that we want to do the greatest good for the greatest number. Uh, we want to make sure that suffering is reduced and happiness is increased. Uh, so there's no point having a, a, an overly, uh, you know, philosophical stance on things. You should, uh, you know, do the thing that will make people's lives the best when you're, when you're making moral judgments. And that should apply to politics. Um, so when we're thinking of those sorts of things, we're, we're trying to increase uh, people's quality of life. We're trying to increase the length of their life. We're trying to increase their wealth. Uh, so, you know, what they consume and, and, and what they have to enjoy their lives with. We're trying to increase their health and we're trying to increase their freedoms. The other element to that is the cornucopian side. Uh, so, a cornucopian is a futurist that believes that continued progress and provision of material items for mankind can be met by similarly continued advances in technology. So, essentially, we're not to get society to a better place uh, and to continue getting better, we need to rely on technology. So uh, the opposite of that, uh, just to give you some background, is the Malthusian hypothesis, hypothesis which is that, um, well, it was, it was, yeah, uh, about a century ago, uh, this guy, he, he had this theory that the world's food supply was gonna outstrip growth in population. On the left, you can see the amount of food required in grain and the rate of production that Malthus uh, predicted. Uh, and it was just, uh, you know, at some point in time, it was predicted that we we're gonna run out of food. And, you know, people were thinking that we we're gonna have mass starvation. What really happened is on the right. And that's that throughout time, the amount of food produced per person increased. So not only did we keep up with the amount of food required, we exceeded the amount of food required based on previous times. And the reason why that happened is because of market forces and technological development. That's what we see our vision for the party being, that, that we can solve problems of today and problems of tomorrow through technology. I think, it, because if I can interject yeah. briefly, the important caveat being that you still see a lot of starvation in the Day, you still see dying, people dying of uh, hunger all the time. And that's often fundamentally down to political and economic structural problems, which are the kind of things that political parties can fix. Um, so for technology to be able to feed everybody, it's not enough for the average amount of calories per to go up as it has been going. There needs to be an environment in which people have, everyone has access to the benefits of that technology. Exactly. And that's a big problem in the world, and even in Australia, in obviously not so, so you look at, um, you know, in, in places in the world where there's mass starvation, quite often it's due to civil war and corruption. 
Um, it's, it's not actually due to there being not enough food in the world. There's plenty of food in the world. We waste food um, at the moment. Um, you know, when you look at uh, Aboriginal populations in Central Australia, you know, they're suffering from diseases which are eradicated in third world countries. We still have them here. That's because of lack of access to treatments, because of poor planning by governments. So those are the sorts of things. You know, we have plenty in Australia. It's just the distribution problem. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, we. So, uh, so this is this is one sentence I think wraps us up pretty well. So the Future Party believes that our quality of quality of life is improved primarily through technological developments, source, uh, sourced through a scientific approach to knowledge in the context of democracy and peace. So all of those things are needed in order to make sure that our society, uh, you know, achieves uh, benefit for everyone. Okay, so let's talk about what we would like to do if we were to govern. So we would love to do things like invest in systems that promote skill and knowledge attainment. Uh, we want to invest in systems that increase efficiency. We want to promote the production and adoption of technology where it's technically feasible. Uh, we want evidence-based uh, decision making. So we don't want to do it off, you know, some. Uh, hardened philosophical belief or religious belief or something like that. We want to see things that work. If they work, we do them. Um, we want individual freedoms to prevail and we want market forces to be utilised where they're, they're useful. Um, and we want to establish systems that create more, more for more people before catastrophes. We saw in the, uh, the Malthusian uh, prediction earlier. Okay, so... Um, we want to promote uh, skill and knowledge attainment, so we want to invest more in education, and we want to you know, focus on improving students who are currently falling behind. So uh, investing in education, it might include the Gonski reforms that have come up recently, um, that they're talking about. Uh, at the moment, the Labor Party is talking about investing $5 billion more, sorry, $6 billion more, now that it's been adjusted for inflation, uh, into the high school and primary school system Unfortunately, they're taking away from the university system to do it, uh, which I think is a big mistake. Um, so, increase efficiency. So these are lots of little things that we can do to, to make our systems work better. So, um, we can increase the efficiency of the ele electricity network uh, by doing things like getting smart meters installed. That means that things like uh, renewable energy become a lot more useful. You can price, energy usage more easily. That means that you can work out the true value of um, various elements of the electricity network and invest accordingly. Um, so, you know, the, the base load that's provided by the coal uh, power system versus the intermittent uh, power that's provided by uh, renewable resources. Um, so we have high-speed rail. Uh, we can get efficiency gains by reducing uh, the production of sorry, carbon emissions, um, and we can connect greater areas of Australia by having this high-speed network. Um, driverless cars, um, there are going to be many efficiency gains by promoting driverless cars, and Australia should actually be, you know, knocking down the doors of companies like uh, BMW and Google and other companies that are doing research into this field to come to Australia to do their research here, uh, because it will be many years before we get them to, to actually work here. They, ha they, ha they actually have to do the research here first uh, before they can release the cars because Australia's roads are different and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the efficiency gains that you get from that are things like uh, reduced uh, emissions per journey because you don't have lead-footed drivers driving around. You have uh, increased, uh, decreased travel time because the most efficient route is chosen. Um, you have decreased fatalities per uh, journey because the car is less likely to have an accident than a regular driver. Um, you have increased uh, uh, movement of people who can't transport themselves otherwise. So the elderly, the disabled, um, and young people, and people who want a night out on the town and you know <laughs> want to get home safely. Um, Except for those slogans, you know. 
<laughs> so we've got um, other things that increase efficiency, like preventative health. If we can stop people getting sick in the first place, then we can prevent a lot of the uh, medical costs that can be sent in the system. Um, electronic health records play directly into that. Uh, so being able to see what a patient's uh, you know, lifetime is like in, in terms of their medical records means that a doctor can make a better judgment. You can do other really interesting things like um, use computer programs to analyze those uh, records and do predictive modeling on it and then further inform the doctor and say, well, this person has symptoms A, B, and C. Do a test for you know, uh, disease D because they might have that, which may not have come up earlier for the, the doctors involved. Um, so uh, this sounds really weird when I write this one. Uh, increasing efficiency uh, and saying anti-war. Um, I think that um, a lot of the people in the Future Party that, that started it off, um, we see war as incredibly wasteful. So there, there are obviously going to be situations where it won't, can't be avoided. If, if you're, you know, France in World War II, you know, you're going to want to defend off the Nazis. Um, but I think that a lot of people in our party and Australia largely think that we've gone to war you know, in cases where it really wasn't necessary and where lots of people have suffered as a result of it. Um, you know, a human life is extremely valuable um, and, you know, it, it's just a huge waste. So we should try and avoid where, war where possible. Okay, so promoting the production and adoption of technology. So we want to teach programming at school. Um, that in itself is really uh, all about you know, technology, obviously, programming, but also teaches uh, kids a lot of other skills which will help them with problem solving in the future. And, and that means that when it comes to, you know, when they're working in a, a field like, you know, engineering, they understand the processes of, of breaking up a, a large problem into small problems and stuff like that, that are taught in learning how to program. Um, increased funding to research, obviously, um, we want to see more government research, but at the same time, we also want to promote private research in Australia. I think there's a lot of space for Australia to expand its uh, private research uh, beyond what it has currently. We're only at about 2.3% of GDP is spent on research, um, which is pretty low. It'd be nice if we could have it a bit higher than that. Um, and from, obviously, the National Broadband Network when, when you connect people um, and you allow them to communicate, you allow ideas to move more quickly between one another. And what that means is that people learn more quickly. People can do their research more quickly. People can, can start the processes to getting the technology into the hands of the people that need it more quickly. So communication um, is actually really fundamental to making sure that we have a good society. Uh, so, uh, let's talk about evidence-based decision-making. So an example of that is our drug policy. So at the moment, OC's evidence points to uh, harm minimization through decriminalization has a positive effect. So that's the evidence that we have right now. So our leaders should be taking that evidence and implementing it, right? The thing that we don't know at the moment is whether it will work in Australia. So what we do is we do a trial and we work out if it will work in Australia and if it does work, then we keep it. But if it's not working, then we should get rid of it. So that's, that's the kind of evidence-based approach that we want to have in Australian politics. Um, not fear campaigns, uh, you know, like that refugees are gonna take over the country. Work out what uh, the benefits and detriments of any policy are, and then act on it accordingly, not fear. Um, so uh, obviously we want to promote individual freedoms uh, and use market uh, forces where necessary. So uh, obviously freedom in electronic communication, you know, the government, the Labor government has on many occasions talked about ways that they're going to 
you know, stop you from visiting various websites. And the justification is always, we want to stop the child pornography rings and all these other awful things that you might your websites. Well, so, so this is the thing. You, you have, at the moment, um, a book by Philip Nischke. Uh, he's called The Australian Doctor Death. Um, and he promotes uh, euthanasia. Now, euthanasia is a pretty important topic at the moment, uh, and it has been for about 10 years. Yet, the government has booked, uh, sorry, banned a book by him because of self-harm. In reality, that book tells you what the method is and how to do it safely, and it gives you information on whether it is safe or not. So, by banning that book, we as a nation are worse off because we can't make a good decision on whether euthanasia would go ahead or not if our number one representative, our number one academic on the policy is banned from having this book published. I, I, I that, just like to briefly note for the record that um, this isn't a case of free speech for the things we care about and stuff you for the rest of it. Euthanasia is not actually part of the future fighting's policy platform, yeah. um, but we do believe in the, the freedom of speech to have a free exchange of ideas about it. Exactly, and and so we we don't we don't want to have people's political views silenced, and and keeping the internet open is really important to that because if we have websites which don't just don't exist, we are losing our information. We are we are not going to be able to have the intelligent discussions about how we want to move our nation forward. So we need to make sure that the internet is uncensored because. If you have a, a, a censored internet where, you know, oh, we're going to black out these websites. Oh, but we can't tell you what those websites are because we don't want you to visit them if you can get around the blackout, you know, uh, firewall. So that list becomes secret and we don't know what we don't know. So we've got to keep the internet uncensored. Um, we want to have online privacy because it's important that we are able to communicate freely without fear of persecution. Uh, at the moment, the government is talking about, you know, ways that they're going to routinely collect data about all individuals. I think that's really bad. I don't think that collecting data about individuals is bad, per se, as long as it's done through the proper sources. So in the old days, if you wanted to, to wiretap someone's phone, you would, um, you know, get a warrant from the court and then um, the police would tap that person's phone and intercept their, their communications. The government wants to make it so everything is collected all the time. And I think that's unreasonable and I think it's a huge invasion on privacy. Um, so individual freedoms, uh, marriage equality, anti-discrimination, these are things uh, that obviously I, I feel like they go without saying. Um, that, you know, we really shouldn't be in the 21st century discriminating against people based on their, their, their sexual preference. Um, so um, in, in the market forces area here, we've got, uh, we're, we're very pro uh, private investment where it can be utilized properly. In areas like education, it's hard to get private investment to be, um, to be incentivized properly. Uh, but in other areas, we can definitely take advantage of private investment and uh, you've all seen the, the policy about Turing, I hope, about the new charter city. Um, we intend to have that not as some um, uh, communist utopia, but as uh, a, a city which is built on private investment and only goes ahead when there's enough uh, companies backing it for it to go ahead. Um, we're anti-monopoly because that's anti-markets. When you don't have a choice, you don't have a market, you can't have proper price discovery, you can't have um, people getting good value for money. Um, and we want to remove distortionary taxes and other legislation which interfere with markets. Um, so a great example of that is the housing uh, taxes, the capital gains exclusion, um, things like stamp duty, they all play into uh, a distortionary system which is making housing unnecessarily Expensive. So where we can find policy like that, where the, the market is being disrupted unnecessarily, then we, we'd like to remove that. James, could you speak up a little bit? Yep, okay. Um, 
So I think I'm nearly at the end of this one. Um, so creating more for more people. Uh, cheering, obviously, it's a new city. It provides a way for more migration and it provides an increase in livable uh, space uh, for people. Uh, nuclear power research is, um, well, we, we're going to run out of energy if we keep on relying on uh, fossil fuels at some point. We, we've got about 500 years worth of coal for Australia, but it's a, a lot less for the rest of the world. We need to find ways to get energy from a variety of sources to make sure that we have um, a way to power our society as our energy needs increase. Um, so why we need you? We want you to become a party member, um, obviously. Um, you know, just by becoming a party member, you actually uh, help us get registered, help us get to that 500 level so that we can become an official party and run. Um, we want you to do promotion, not just for the party itself, but also for its vision. I think this, this idea needs to get just a, a public awareness. And even if this party doesn't get elected to parliament, if this, these ideas get out there, I think that's a really positive thing. Um, and we want you to extend and refine our existing policy. So we want you to be involved in all of that stuff. You know, creating more policies where it doesn't exist and uh, making it better where there can be some.